Good morning, my name is Chris Adlam from Youth Pledge for Employers and I'm delighted to be joined by Sam Cage, Director of Ocala Healthcare. Hello Sam. Hi there. Fantastic, thank you for joining us this morning. So um, as a starting point, give me a little bit of a breakdown of what you do at Ocala Healthcare. So we are a care provider. We have a few different contracts. We're not sort of like a normal care provider in terms of we don't sort of do the domiciliary um, sort of pop in visits, which some people um, think that we do do. Um, so we provide care for people within their home on a 24 seven package. Uh, so we've got one lady that we support. Um, so we support her to live independently. Um, she's a wheelchair user. And um, yeah, so she has our carers there 24 seven. So she has the day shifts and then she has the waking nights um, overnight as well. Uh, so they're the kind of packages that we um, offer people. And then we um, also we have a really exciting contract with Suffolk County Council. Um, we have uh, retained support workers. So um, my business partner and the other director, Adam, he used to be a retained firefighter for Devon Fire Service. And he basically used the model of the fire service in care. So we have um, at the moment we have two retained support workers who are on call when care providers are in crisis and they shoot over there. So it's a really exciting, it's a relatively new service. We started in April. Um, so there's this kind of two legs of the business that we do. That's brilliant. And again, thanks for sort of, you know, breaking down and say those two legs. I know this will probably be difficult to answer because I know it's a difficult question for any employer to answer. But taking into account those two legs, if you had to describe a sort of a typical day in each or even a typical night, I guess, as I say, which is applicable as well, you know, what would you say they're like? Do you know what I do the training for our carers and I think one of my first slides is about this you know I quite often get asked what's a typical day like and actually <laughs> ultimately because we go to different services we can't ever actually say but ultimately we are providing care and support for someone so that might not necessarily mean that we're doing personal care for everyone that we go to for some people yes we do uh, we're working as part of a team and um, so again that could be working on a one-to-one -one basis or that could be working with you know sort of four or five members of staff within that team on shift but either side of that you're still working as part of a team because if you're loan working you're making sure your notes are filled in thoroughly so you're just part of that bigger team um we're contributing towards um activities so uh the lady um that we have um who's in a wheelchair she loves to go out and about so she's got her own activities that she goes along to she's part of a theater group um quite often with the carers she'll go into town um and they'll either go shopping or go and get a coffee or something like that so usually on the the work that we do there's usually and, and, and people usually kind of enjoy that oh yes we're going to the cinema um, it's not always like that, but there are usually there's some nice perks of actually, you know, kind of enjoying life with with people. Um, and then, yes, there is those sort of care and support needs in terms of the sort of uh, retained support worker role. It's responding to people in crisis. So actually, they never really know what they're walking into. And one of my favourite lines um, when I was interviewing people for the role is, what is it now? The only thing we do know is you don't know what you're going into. And that genuinely, <laughs> genuinely is, is the case with that particular um, contract. It's care providers in crisis. It could be because of staffing. It could be challenging behaviour. So they really don't know what they're walking into, but they're using their skills, their training um, to reflect on the situation, take a step back and say, actually, this can be used to sort of improve this individual situation. So I didn't entirely answer your question there, but hopefully I kind of skirted <laughs> um, around it. <laughs> No, no, you, you definitely did. And you actually touched on um, something there, um, which will lead me brilliantly into my next question. So you touched on the kind of skills and training you're looking for for someone when they're in um, one of these kind of roles. So do you want to give me a little bit more of a breakdown of the kind of yeah, skills, qualifications, you know, experiences that you're looking for for someone in these roles? Perfect. Yes. So um, on our 24-7 um, care packages, we do ask that people have six months experience, but we can sort of take a bit of a view on that if maybe someone's got three months and, you know, they've been really busy at work or they've also cared for family members. So there is a requirement to um, that they have got experience working in the care industry. Um, and we, again, depending on the different packages that we go to, I do always like to check that people are um, confident and sort of quite happy to deliver personal care. Because even if we're going along to someone who um, is completely continent, 
they may well have an accident or there might be a time when actually they kind of need to deliver that support, even if it's not on a day to day basis. Um, we have a thorough interview um, process that we do, um, but basically if people sort of phone us up, we have a chat with them, they've got that experience, they've got the right attitude. There isn't any, you know, specific, you don't need to have GCSEs, you don't need to have different qualifications. It's about really having the right personality and to see that that person cares. And our um, interview questions that we have is to try and basically sort of get that out of um, the carers that we're interviewing to kind of see what they're like, you know, see them understanding. And again, if someone's not worked in the care industry, they might not necessarily know about CQC and safeguarding, but hopefully they can have a bit of a stab on kind of what that might mean in terms of sort of protecting people and stuff. And uh, brilliant, you're back now. That's fine. Um, so you touched a little bit about there about the right attitude, and again, you sort of touched on people who maybe might come into this kind of um, sector of work, maybe without the right experience, as say your expectation. So I guess the right attitude is even more important in that case. So you know, what what when you say the right attitude, sort of what skills and personality traits are you looking for within that? I suppose my initial thought is it comes down to that word of, of being caring. Uh, you know, we want people, you know, if we think about, I often think about my nana, you know, would I want this person caring for um, my nana? But in the different packages that we've got, we've got such a range of different people from different backgrounds, different genders, different ages. And actually that's lovely in one, in one package because you're getting all the different input. Um, so we want someone to be caring. We obviously want them to be safe, but obviously that's, that stuff that can be learned, you know, they do um, a day and a half um, training with myself. We sort of have that as um, a minimum standard for all of our care team. And then on different packages, we have additional trainers. So they're going to learn those things. Um, but yeah, certainly that, you know, they've got confidence because you might see something that isn't right. And we need to know that people have the confidence to speak up and say, hey, you know, I was working with Sally and, you know, I've seen something that's not right and knowing the right way to report that. No, that, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, you've touched a little bit on this already, sort of about the, the maybe the rewarding aspects of the job and stuff. But I like I always think this is a really good question to ask, boys. Like, what do you feel the biggest challenge is within these roles? And as I say, what is the biggest sort of reward and payoff for it? Oh, um, I suppose the reward and payoff to me, that's that's a really easy one. I worked as a carer for many, many years um, and I absolutely loved it i enjoyed going into work i loved making a difference to people's lives uh you know what can you do on this particular shift this particular time um to make a difference and make that person happy so that was always something you know to walk away from the shift and you know sort of think that i'd made a difference um and then you know from my sort of personal perspective as well i love learning about all the different people that i worked with you know i was a bit of a geek and i'd go home and research into the different conditions um and everything afterwards so i loved gaining that knowledge for myself and you know if I was administering medication I'd go and read about medication so I loved continuously um kind of learning with the different techniques that were coming out um so that's the I've, I've forgotten the other part of the question so uh, I mean you, you sort of touched I mean touched on there it was, it was about like as I said the biggest challenge and the biggest reward um but I think if anything actually I think the point you've come out of there with the, your willingness to always want to improve yourself and continually improve and gain new skills um, sort of supersedes any challenges that may come your way. Um, and that's really, really good. And actually, you also touched on that you'd had a, you know, you'd had a career in care before you found yourself where you are now. Do you mind just talking me through a little bit about your, let's say, your career path, your journey and how, yeah, you've ended up where you are today? Yes, I will do. So um, I, it was when I well, actually, do you know what I started when I was working in care when I was about 13, 14 um, and I started volunteering. Um, there were some charities during the summer holidays where we would go and support children with disabilities. Um, and I absolutely loved it. It was good fun. Um, you know, we were working with sort of quite a few other young people. And again, I was really enjoying gaining that experience um, and sort of my volunteering time continued until I was around 18 and then um, I went and got paid employment uh, working in care. So I worked for an agency. I was at university at the time and that worked really well for me. A, the flexibility when I was back in Suffolk um, where I live, I could work 60, 70 hours a week. And when I was over at Reading for uni, I didn't have to worry about work. So for me, that worked really well. 
And then again, and that was where I worked with a huge range of people. I worked a lot in Ipswich Hospital. Um, basically, anywhere different I could work to, that's the shifts I was picking up and I was going to. So I, I love that side of it. Um, so I did that alongside my studies for three, four years. Um, and then I worked as a senior support worker um, in a residential home um, for eight residents with learning disabilities. Um, and then I became a registered manager for a domiciliary care company. Um, then after that, I did that for about a year. And then I kind of fell into care recruitment. I think that was at the point where I'd been in care for quite a bit and needed a little bit of a step back. So I went into care recruitment uh, where I worked at, for five years, but kind of realised it was quite a big company um, that, and that's where myself and um, the other director, Adam, met. But we realised that there was stuff we wanted to do, which was a bit different. And we were kind of working for a recruitment company, which was more kind of driving and industrial and didn't really kind of like may maybe value the carers as much as we wanted to. So we kind of come up with this idea that we could do things a bit different and then an idea turned into a business plan. Um, and then from the business plan, it was like, right, OK, no, let's quit our jobs and actually start the business, um, which we did in um, the summer of 2017. And we incorporated the business in November 2017. So we're coming up to our five year anniversary. Um, so it was, a, it was a huge leap in terms of starting, you know, a business from scratch, not kind of having any experience on the kind of business side. Yes, we knew how to run all the aspects. Um, but yeah, it was really exciting. And we did everything ourselves for, I think, nearly the first three years, you know, so it was absolutely everything. Um, and then I, th I think Adam classes it as the day we became a real business was when we actually employed someone. And obviously in that time, we also had COVID, which was a huge challenge, um, you know, for us. We had our, our daughter in that time, but we just kept going. And we've now got um, two businesses. So we've got a Carla Healthcare and we've got a Carla Recruitment. At the beginning of this year, we split the two businesses to separate them. And we're just continuously, continuously developing. We've got four people who work for us in the office. Um, we've got a manager who will hopefully be, hopefully be taking on the registration soon. And me and Adam can work, spend more time working on the business development which we want to be doing that's amazing thanks for breaking down and say your sort of journey and pathways there and actually the question i want to ask come out of that is obviously the the entrepreneurial side of things that probably as i say was needed when you both suddenly saw actually there's an opportunity here there's a gap in the market there's a way we think things should be doing done differently um you know what skills do you think you know you've developed and needed to as i say make that leap that maybe you hadn't gained from your previous careers in care well do you know what actually i will just touch on so adam's previous experience very different both within the care industry but he actually started out as an electrician um and then i think the recession hit and he kind of fell into care because of a family member sort of said oh you can go and get a job there um so he worked in in care and then sort of fell into to care recruitment that side so it's funny sometimes how your paths kind of you start with one thing and for one reason or another you do kind of um change um so in terms of the business side of things do you know we had some great support um from mentor um so they do some really good training courses um for people who are starting up businesses and we just absorbed all that knowledge we really really did we everything you know and we're quite happy to speak up and say we don't know something you know even now we're now that we employ people we've got um solicitors and hr um advisors um you know we're only a small business we don't need them employed full-time but we have them that we can lean on if there's you know a query we're not quite sure of the answers um but yeah, so we've just continued to learn. Um, I do all the training for um, the organisation as well. So I did my level three in training um, and development. Um, yeah, and we just keep doing, I was a couple of weeks ago, I was on a women in leadership course. So even now, five years um, into the business, we're still huge believers in our own personal development. Um, this year, particularly, I've read so many fantastic books about leadership you know business development and even like for example um robin sharma the 5am club about actually you know you get up at 5am and um you know you start your day well and how that can shape the rest of your day actually to achieve your goals so we, we talk a lot about our goals and i think a lot of what we do comes down to some good planning they don't always happen exactly you know and if we think about covid we never could have anticipated that but we kind of like you know take things and and, and ride with them really that's amazing. And as I say, I think it speaks volumes about, as I say, your want to better yourself, you know, the ability.
as you say, maybe ask those silly questions when needed. You know, I say once you can sort of get over those barriers, then you know it can only help you progress. So say as you're gaining those skills. Um, just to round off, really, we're asking sort of all the employees we have talked with this particular question, um, just because it's good to reflect. I so say you've sort of addressed a bit about um, your earlier days and your early career path. If you could go back and speak to, say, I don't know, 16, 17 year old Sam, who was, as say, starting out on her career path, based on your career path you've had to date, what kind of advice would you give to yourself? You know, I, th I sometimes do reflect on this myself. I think most of everything that I've done is kind of falling into place in terms of my experience and where I've ended up um, today, which is fantastic. I think one of the things for me is I'd have probably chosen a degree. I did mental health psychology. Uh, which, to tell you the truth, you walk out having a degree in mental health psychology and it means nothing. Like, it, it was literally like, it's great that I've got that education level to that level. Um, but I think if I was to go back now, I would have done um, nursing. So I'd have done a bit more of a practical um, course where you come out of it and you're a nurse. And I think I could still have ended up in this position that I'm sat here in today. Um, but I'd also have that kind of more practical qualification um, behind me. But in terms of, you know, I've always worked hard, whatever job I'm in, um, you know, and even now with the business, when there's been times and I've gone out, as a carer you know I will always give it 110 percent and that's always what I've done and I think you know if people are doing that whatever job they're in giving it 110 percent then I think they'll continue you know and continue to plan and you know wanting more for yourself then they'll do well that that's a brilliant piece of, of advice and a lovely note to end on so um thanks again Sam for sparing your time this morning no worries thank you